Hey everyone, this is Malik over here with Inner Life Restoration. Welcome back. So excited that you're here today and we're discussing and getting deeper into understanding what it's like to become like God here on the earth, to think like Him, to move in this earth like Him, to have creation and the hearts of individuals open up to us to build, to expand, to arise, to shine, right? And to begin to understand that, we need the right foundation. It's not about performing. We're not performing on this earth to have the favor of God in our lives. God wants to give it to those individuals who really have a heart to release what's in heaven and bring it here on the earth. Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago and taught and said to his disciples, a student can't be greater than his teacher, but can become like his teacher. God was literally giving his disciples, his students, right? A blueprint of how to become like him and how to live like him uniquely here on the earth. And those are the ancient truths I want to open up for us today, no matter which background, which belief system you're a part of. If you submit yourself and allow yourself to receive from this teaching, things are going to begin to open up. Opportunities are going to begin to open up. You're going to begin to think differently where you can attract what God is wanting to bring into your life. You can begin to receive it. And you know, um, right before I was going to make this message, I began to doubt myself of you know, how valuable I am, of how much potential I have in releasing this message to transform the lives of other people. When, the, when you're on the path of your purpose of building your dreams, right, these kinds of circumstances might find you where you're questioning yourself. Maybe you won't, but I did. And you know what? I've learned to remind myself to appreciate when these moments come to pass because I get to strengthen myself in the resolve that no, this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. I got a download from heaven, from Jesus to deliver this message because this is what people need to hear to align themselves, to become like God, free from performance and understand some of the blueprints to building. It's a building season and perhaps you're not there yet or maybe you are or you will be, but there's gonna be some awesome clues right? Some mysteries that are going to get opened up where when the season comes, you're going to have a greater understanding of how to build, right? So grab something to drink. Let's hang out. I'm going to make it short and sweet. And, you know, take notes, right? Begin to take notes in your mind or written of the keys that are going to be released. And when we were talking about this in the previous uh, session, right? There's been two sessions previously. In the second session, the one before this, we were talking about Nehemiah, how he's a cupbearer, right? He doesn't have a very lofty position, very influential position. It, he has a very basic, simple function in his day-to-day -day life. And he's been taught to keep his mouth shut because in those positions, though you have the ability to speak to a superior and have access to a superior because he was the cupbearer to the king, he wasn't able to use his influence, his, his ability to be resourceful with what's around him. He was taught the opposite, right? Hey, if you want to survive, just stay under the radar. And when Nehemiah heard about what was going on back in his home country, that they were in trouble, that the temple was destroyed, he said, I can't just keep this to myself. And it says that he sought God for days, right? For months, for five months, he continued to seek God. And was really coming into an alignment of, hey, the change is going to come through me, right? The changes that you've been thinking about that the society needs, right? You have a revelation of it because God is choosing you to be the individual to go and deliver it, right? To go and redeem that aspect of creation, right? Of business, of finance, of government, right? Of entertainment, wherever it is, God is choosing you. So will you answer the call? Will you begin to look outside of the lens of life that perhaps maybe you've had in the past of, you know, this is all that I can do, right? I, I'm not capable of, you know, creating something to such of a, a magnitude, such a stature. Snap out of it. You're the one to build it. 
So, and I'm gonna share an awesome story at the end of this, a testimony that's gonna even open up more of an understanding and allow you to picture yourself in there and a tangible weight of impartation is gonna come upon your life of boldness, of courageousness, of a sensitivity to the spirit to understand, okay, what am I supposed to say right now? What is really happening, right? So let's get into the story for today and get excited, get really excited right now, just pump up your energy, you know, like get ready to receive. If your heart is open to receive, your world can be transformed right now right now right now so and that's how i posture myself in life right whoever i come around whatever they believe i'm like god you live in everyone you can speak through everyone i'm just hungry and excited and expecting everywhere i go i'm like okay god's gonna move you know if you have that mentality man you just continue to get blessed and you grow in this heart of love and appreciation for all that's around you right have the right perspective that's what today is about of being able to have the right soil so the seeds can begin to sprout right without limitation on how high how wide you can go how you know abundant can your harvest be right how much can you manifest you are the dictator of that. So be limitless, right? Because that's what God is like, limitless. So in Nehemiah chapter 2, we had discussed how uh, Nehemiah was in front of the king and asked God, God, give me favor in front of this man today, right? And when he got in front of that man, which is the king, the king looked at him and said, hey man, your face has got like something written all over it. I'm looking right through you. I haven't seen this side of you. This could be nothing but sadness of heart. And so Nehemiah, after years perhaps, right, of his position, just shh, keeping quiet, seeing injustices, seeing things that are not right, not fair, that aren't working well, just, hey, I'm going to be quiet. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to ruffle the feathers. I don't want to bring negative attention upon me. No, that's not how we're supposed to live in life. Nehemiah realized why, when, it, when it really hit home and he's like, man, my people are struggling. I just got a revelation of this. Can I still keep quiet? God, give me the boldness, right? God, you've put me in this position to use my voice, to use whatever leverage I have, right? I'm not going to go another day without speaking forth what needs to be corrected. So Nehemiah said, of course, why wouldn't I be in this position, man? Like the, my people at home, in my hometown, right? My, where my ancestors are buried. The home is destroyed. The temple is destroyed. And this property is under the stewardship of this king. So think about that. He's saying, hey, what's under your stewardship is really affecting me, is affecting my family and my generations, right? And so because Nehemiah is staying in a place of con constant contact, right? Constant communication with God, God is telling him now's the time, right? And so the king says, what can I do for you? What do you want? And so because of that constant communication that Nehemiah has, he realized now's the time I'm going to inquire. And he said, let's, let's get into it. Then the king, oh no, hold on one second. Then the king with the queen sitting beside him asked me, how long will your journey take? And when will you get back? It pleased the king to send me. And so I set a time. Isn't that awesome? So he pours his heart out, takes a chance, takes a risk, speaks out for the injustices. Not just the king who he prayed would give him favor. The king and the queen are giving him favor now. And so then Nehemiah continues because he realized that I don't just get to dictate the time. God is giving me complete favor. The hand of this king, the heart of this king is now in my hand. And Whatever I inquire, I will receive. That's how it is for you when you're building. When you're building um, solutions, right, to help individuals who are struggling. That's what a good entrepreneur is. That's what a good politician does. That's what an entertainment industry professional does is, you know, speaking to the soul and the heart of the individual to enlighten, to bring a progression into their life, right? The next stage of their life to be able to see it clearly. Music does that too. If that's your heart, God's going to pour out a creative glory portal over you, right? Where you'll begin to see things years in advance. And you would have the ability to have resources come to you, not looking for them, right? 
And that's what happened with Nehemiah. So he says, I also said to him, if it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of the trans Euphrates so that they will provide me safe conduct until I arrive in Judah. You see, Nehemiah began to think in advance. He began to see uh, the future because God was giving him a blueprint. He's like, hey, now that you have favor to go, here are the things that you're going to need to have in place for the mission to be successful, for the project to uh, come to fruition, right? So you are having a blueprint right now, a strategy, a key, a revelation of, okay, I need to think in advance, right? This is the end goal, right? Restoring this temple and these people, but what am I going to need along the journey, right? And don't minimize your ability to have the fullness of what you need. Think big, right? Think bigger, excel it, multiply it based upon how you originally thought it, right? Because God only thinks big. God's ideas are successful. They're huge. They're massive. When he spoke the world into an existence, this is what came, right? Come on. So if you're like God, which you are, you need to begin to move in that realm. Wow. Wow. There's even alignment coming in right now. Whoa. Man, there's alignment coming in into people's lives right now. And I declare it and I decree it in Jesus' mighty name that you're going to see tangible evidence, right, of, of clicking with connections coming together. Yeah, it's happening. God's doing it right now because you're already coming into an alignment with the truth, right? So now the angels of God can begin to move, right, and bring forth what you're destined to do. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And this isn't about religion, but I'm going to be true to who I am. You can be true to who you are. You're most welcome here. I bless you. I love you. And I thank you for taking the time to be with me. Yes. Yes. And I want to take some time and be with you. Reach out to me. Yeah. So he continues. He says, and may I have a letter to go to Asaph, keeper of the royal park, so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates and of the citadel by the temple for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy. Whoa. He's like, hey, I'm going to need building materials. Not only will I need permission to go into these territories, but I'm going to need building materials. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I went to the governor of the trans Euphrates and gave them the king's letters. The king had also sent army officers and cavalry with me. Nehemiah didn't ask for that. Did you see that? Nehemiah didn't ask for the, the army officers and cavalry, but God always goes above and beyond what you could ask or imagine. Because you see, Nehemiah began to move in the consciousness of what it's like to be like God, right? He was willing to be bold, courageous, right? Because his heart is filled with looking after the needs of other people who were oppressed, right? Putting himself in harm's way where people were destroyed in that territory and going there. I'm not saying you have to go to that extent, extent i'm just saying if you have a heart to bring solutions what a, nehemiah on the simplest form was bringing a solution if your heart is to bring a solution to aid other people this is the kind of favor you can expect and this is what the most high god el elion adonai el shaddai jesus christ yeshua hamashiach releases right over all people who have this kind of heart posture so when uh san Ballad, the Horonite and Tobiah, the Ammonite official, heard about this. They were much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites. So now Nehemiah has come to the homeland, right? Now, as he's there, he's hearing, he's discerning. It doesn't say that, you know, Nehemiah spoke to these individuals, but Nehemiah's discerning and understanding that these people, right, heard about me being here. How did he know that? It's the gift of prophecy, right, of the prophetic gift, right, of words of knowledge, of discernment, right? He, he began to move in deep realms of glory, right? He didn't have that gift before, but he has it now, right? He didn't know the heart of the king before. He was, he was just, you know, asking God what's going on. But now that realm is opened up because he's really owning his identity. He's understanding, hey, I'm the one. I'm sent here. This is 
under my stewardship, right? These people's lives depend on me. God is moving through me to bless them. I need to own that. And because he's owning it, he's, he's understanding what's happening in that territory, right? So this is what we can expect is as we're on the mission, we're going to begin to receive supernatural discernment, right? Through uh, being able to hear God's voice, right? In all the different ways that he speaks, which I teach. And so if that's something that you desire to grow and reach out to me, or you can go on my website, innerliferestoration.square.site. The link will be below. And there's an entire teaching with an awesome impartation. People's eyes have been opened up to begin to see angels. To, and, and, you know, they're messengers from God. They're bringing revelations from God so you can understand what God is saying, right? Whispers, dreams, visions, all kinds of things. People's senses have completely opened up, right? And like Hebrews 5.14 says, when we train our senses, right, we can begin to discern what's good and what's evil, right? So, um, Nehemiah received this supernatural download of what was going on in that territory. So, it says, I went to Jerusalem and after staying there three days, I sent out during the night. I set out during the night. I went out during the night uh, with a few others, right? I had not told anyone what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. There were no mounts with me except the one I was riding on. So this is amazing, right? Nehemiah is being super observant of what's happening in this area for three days. He's like, okay, I'm on a mission. This is a hostile area, right? And maybe it's a competitive area, right? Maybe it's, a, it's an area that's filled with injustice and not everyone is playing by the rules. So because of that, I'm being discerning and understanding how am I going to move forward and leverage this situation to work for me. So Nehemiah, and these are the keys for building, right? Remember this, right? This is becoming like God, right? Everything is in God's hands. Everything is in Nehemiah's hands. So he's being patient, right? He's got all of the letters, right? The authority to build, the resources, the army. He's got everything. But he's being very patient. He's being very discerning and observant. These are keys. So, and he decides to go out in the nighttime. He doesn't need to hide. He's got the army, man. He's got the favor of God with him. But he's like, okay, no. I, I'm understanding that this is the strategy right now. So he went forth and decided to just scope it out, right? Just to get an overview of what's happening. Whoa, man. There's like a... a a deep weight of God's glory that just fell right now, right? Like a deep, it's getting even deeper right now because I'm speaking about it. It's opening up. There's great joy when you're building for God. The dream, the vision that God is giving you, there's great joy in building it, right? And so just keep that perspective when you're on this journey to remain in a place of joyfulness. It could be so grand, it could be so intricate with multiple pieces and people and enterprises that are needed, right? And regions to cooperate that are needed, but just be joyful. It's all gonna come together because when God's glory breathes upon it, everything just click, click, clicks together, right? And so, Father, we thank you for your glory right now. Thank you right now. Just begin to give them revelation. Just begin to give them downloads, wisdom, clarity. We thank you for the ministering spirits of wind, of fire that are coming upon them to release the description of their calling, that it would become clear. Yeah, I sense that right now there's clarity coming on what you're called to do, right? Maybe it wasn't really clear before, but it's becoming clear now. So I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. And I thank you for that fresh baptism of joy. I release it over them right now. That from their bellies, they will begin to ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Just laugh, Lord. Just laugh. And let all of the, the heaviness of the past, right? All of the stress, the unease, right? The constant um, just distractions and yeah. The, the trauma of the past, right? I thank you that it's just being melted away right now. I thank you that it's just being cleansed right now by your precious blood. Hallelujah. 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 
So he's being very discerning and he's taking a few people with him, right? Just a few. And he hasn't told anyone why, he, why, why he's there yet. So by night, I went out through the valley. Who, who's enjoying this, man? Is this blessing you? Come on. This is awesome. I'm going to do a live event next time I, so I can have more interaction with people because that'd be nice. By night, I went out through the valley gate toward the jackal wall and the dung gate examining the walls of Jerusalem, which had been broken down and its gates, which had been destroyed by fire. Then I moved toward the fountain gate and the king's pool, but there was not enough room for my mount, his horse, to get through. So I went up the valley by night, examining the wall. Finally, I turned back and re-entered through the valley gate. The officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing, because as yet I had nothing to the I had not said anything to the Jews, nor the priests, nor the nobles, or officials, or any others who would be doing the work. So, like even right now, God is opening up people's ears to hear. You're getting a Ooh, man. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for doing it. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, King of glory. Hallelujah. Right now that their ears are opening up, that they're receiving an impartation from heaven right now to be able to hear your voice clearer, impressions, dreams, visions, to be able to discern through their emotions, to be able to discern through their knower, through their feeler right now. I release the impartation over them. Hallelujah. Bless them, O oh great God. Do great and mighty things through their lives, through their children, through their family members, through their communities, oh great God. Let them pour this anointing out upon everyone around them. Hallelujah. 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 So man, this is awesome. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome 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 okay <laughs> wow thank you lord thank you father for being so awesome so much fun to do what you call for us to do and we can just have joy along the journey Whew. so you see Nehemiah, what he's doing is he's confirming the things that he heard from other people when he was being the cupbearer. He had heard what was going on in Judah, right? In, uh, so what he wanted to do was confirm. He's literally confirming everything that other people have told him so he's not acting hastily, right? He has his facts in order. This is another key. This is another strategy, a blueprint that we should be very discerning of what we've heard and confirming it through research, right? So be a researcher, be an individual who gets to the bottom of things, right? Who's looking at the details. And he's still being very cautious on who he's uh, letting know about his plans, right? He's just, he's just moving. No one really knows, so they can't really question him while he's doing these things. Like, oh, what is this guy up to? He hasn't told anyone anything, right? So then I said to them, now he's speaking to the other people, right? Now he's telling them after he confirmed everything, right? After he observed what's happening in this territory, even though he has all of the letters to do the work, the resources, the army, he was very patient. Then he, I said to them, you see the trouble we are in? Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been burned with fire. Come. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and we will no longer be in disgrace. Wow. So you see, now he can speak confidently and boldly because he's like, I've seen it for myself. I've done the research for myself. I truly understand the situation with my own evidence, right? Of what I have seen. This is important because it will allow us to be like, it will, it will fuel us even more with passion. I'm not just going off of what someone else has said. No, I have confirmed this. This is my conviction. This is why I'm here, right? And so he finally tells them, we need to rebuild the wall, right? Look at the disgrace that we're in, right? 
Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and we will no longer be in disgrace. Now, when Nehemiah is saying this, he's looking at them. He's seeing, okay, who's really serious about this? Who's really down for the count with me, right? Because, you know, up until this point, he hasn't told them that he's got all the resources, the letters, the favor. So people could be like, dude, how are we going to be able to do this, man? We don't have the connections. We don't have the resources. Everything was taken from us, right? We're at ground zero, right? Bankrupt. And he's saying, and some of you even might be going through that season. Like, dude, I've lost everything. I'm at ground zero. How do you expect me to move forward, right? When someone comes along with the vision, right? And has everything in order. It's like, dude, no. Are you sure, man? Like, I've, I've been through this before with other people. Like, are you really the one? God will let you know if, if they're the one. But Nehemiah is saying, we need to rebuild, right? Our city's in ruins. Jerusalem's wall is in ruins. Let's rebuild. And after he looks at everyone's reaction and discerns where they're at, are they really with him? Right? Then he says, I also told them about the gracious hand of my God on me and what the king had said to me. Right? And what the king had said to me. So, amazing. He's just telling them that, hey, God's hand is upon me, right? And what the king had said to me. They replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work, right? Now the work begins, right? And what's amazing is, you know, he really knows who's with him and who's just there. But he keeps it open for everyone, right? And it says, but when Sanballat, the... Horonite, Tobiah the Ammonite official, and Gresham the Arab, the Arab heard about it. They mocked and ridiculed us. What is it this that you're doing? They asked. Are you rebuilding against the king? Right? I answered them by saying, The God of heaven will give us success. We, his servants, will start rebuilding. But as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or historic right to it. It seems like Nehemiah didn't even tell them, hey, I've got the letters, I've got the resources, I've got the army, I've got the full approval. He just looked at these people who were speaking against them with doubt, right? With ridiculing them, mocking them. He just told them straight up. He's like, hey, God is with us. First and foremost, don't get it twisted, man. I'm rolling with the most high, right? <laughs> and we, his servants, will start rebuilding. He didn't explain anything else to them. He said, hey, God is with me. We're doing this, right? And you don't have any part of this, so peace. That's it. You know, like, you don't need to defend yourself or explain yourself to people that aren't a part of the transformation that you're bringing, right? A, a part of what you're building. Don't waste your energy. Nehemiah didn't waste his energy, right? And what's really amazing is when you look at Nehemiah chapter 3, it talks about how, you know, people came together to build, right? And it's because of the few people that started initially. Nehemiah chapter 3 talks about how so many people came, right, to build. But it didn't start that way. It started with just a few, right? Just a few. So if you just have a few to be able to begin to start, on such a huge project such as this, right? Trying to relate it to what you're building in life, right? If it's so massive, so grand, they're rebuilding an entire city, an entire wall that surrounds the city, right? Maybe they only had five people, but these five people were down. They were ready, you know? So they went, right? They started. Nehemiah chapter three talks about almost every tribe, right? The entire region was attracting people in to build. Not all of them were building with excellence, right? It talked about how there were some people that when the observers, the supervisors were there, they weren't really working, you know, but they didn't let anything get in their way. They just kept moving forward. And that's what, that's the kind of foundation we need to have. That's what being God, like God is like, right? That we're going to continue to move forward. We're not performing to win favor from people. We're using what we have. God is going to do the rest through us. He's going to continue to multiply and bring things together, right? The connections, the resources, the timelines are going to happen exactly what they in, in the frame, in the time frame that they need to because God is a redeemer of time. So keeping all those elements, you know, in our spirits, minds, bodies, right? To continue to take the next step, right? That's the key. Don't let it get in your way. And God's going to continue to bring the right people to build, right? And even if some of the people don't, uh, you know, work in the most excellent way, just 
realize that they're there for a reason to teach you something of how to be able to be patient, bold, firm, corrective with people, how to just, you know, be able to be resilient, right? And, and continue to bounce back, to move forward, to be a leader. And that's what Nehemiah grew into, right? He grew into this, right? He came from a cupbearer to beginning to, you know, lead an entire nation to rebuild, right? This is a governmental position, right? Like a governmental position from heaven to be able to do this, right? That's what God is releasing right now is governmental authority to build here on the earth whatever is needed, right? In business, finance, in uh, education, in government, in families, right? In the church, right? In entertainment, arts, crafts, media, all that stuff. God is releasing it. And you have the ability to be like, you know what? I'm available. I've been seeing the injustices. I've been seeing the unfairness. I've been seeing how things have been uh, taken advantage of. And I want to be that individual that will flow against the grain to restore things, right? Where now the people can have what's fair, what's rightfully theirs. As it is in heaven, so shall it be on the earth. So a quick story that I want to share to just kind of like, you know, wrap up this uh, particular session. There's another one, right? But for today, you know, in 2021, I, and in this testimony I'm going to share with you, it's going to release something in the spiritual realm and you're going to feel it tangible upon you, right? And I just declare that the sensitivity of your spirit, man, arises right now in Jesus' mighty name to be able to grab a hold of this, right? And allow it to minister to you, allow it to expand everything that you've understood today. Yes. So in 2021, I was in Pakistan and I was uh, also in Uganda and Africa. And actually I was in Africa at this time and I was about to start my journey to go back home to America where I live in Atlanta, Georgia. But when I was in Africa and Uganda, I applied for a, a visa because my flight from Uganda needed to go into Pakistan first. Then from Pakistan, I was gonna come to America. That's how my flight was set up, right? The only issue was you needed a visa to get into Pakistan, right? So you can go through the airport and then continue your travels, right? Or if you're gonna stay in the country. So I applied for an extension because I was just in Pakistan before I went to Uganda and they didn't answer. It took two, I, I submitted it two months in advance before I was actually gonna fly from Uganda to Pakistan and then America, but I didn't hear anything back. So as the flight is getting very close, right? I'm praying, I'm saying, God, what should I do? Because I, I'm i not sure how I'm gonna manage this. It seems like I need to change my flights. And instead of going from Uganda to Pakistan to America, perhaps I just need to go from Uganda straight to America. But I heard from the Lord and the Lord told me, no, keep your flights as they are. And I said, really? Okay, God's never lied to me and I tested it how I was hearing from God, like 1 John chapter 4 teaches us. That's a part of my foundation when I'm teaching people how to hear from God. Just don't, you know, run with something that you're hearing. No, test it. That's what the Bible tells us. And it's not about getting it right or wrong, but being hungry for hearing what God is saying. So when I uh, was testing, did God really tell me to continue to keep my flight schedule and go into Pakistan? It confirmed. So I was able to confirm it. So then... Um, I realized it could be two things. As soon as I get to Pakistan from Uganda, perhaps the visa will come or I'll just have supernatural favor to get through the airport. I heard of a testimony of Charlie Shamp that he experienced supernatural favor even when his documents were expired. So it was really fueling me, right? So God had already set me up for my faith to be built and realize that he's come through for someone before so he can come through for me. God wants to bless us all just the same. We're all special, right? like equally special. So, uh, and you know, what's it, what is it like to be like God? Does, can, can anything stop God from doing what he's wanting to do, right? No, so same thing for us, right? Same thing for me. So when I got into Pakistan, I'm looking at my phone, still didn't get the visa, and I'm about to go talk to the passport uh, officer, right? The, uh, I can't think of the exact term, but the individual who checks your documents, right? And uh, I talk to the guard on the side before I go to the to the desk to speak with this man. And I say, hey, I just want to uh, enter into the airport. I don't want to enter into the country. I'm going to catch my next flight in about a few hours. And they said, do you have your visa? I said, yeah. They said, okay, 
just get in the line. Once they check your documents, you can continue on. Now, I know what you're thinking, Malik, did you lie to the officer? No, I had my expired visa from before. Like I said, I was in Pakistan for a couple of months before I went to Africa. So I get to the guy and I'm, I'm praying, right? And I'm praying in tongues like And I'm getting in front of the, the officer and I hand all my documents and I say, Hey, I just want to travel uh, in the airport to catch my next flight. I'm not looking to enter into Pakistan, right? And he just looks at me and he says, oh, okay. He stamps an approval on my documents and gives it back to me. And I'm like, whoa, what just happened? Like, this is amazing. I, I just take the documents and I start to go. <laughs> and um, actually, I had to fill out um, uh, one uh, requirement, like just one document before I continued forward. I was writing so fast, like before you could see any more of the details, but God supernaturally shifted what that officer was seeing because on the document I gave him of my visa, it was expired. <laughs> How cool is that, man? Like it says that I had got the visa at this time. It's the duration was this many days and I was way past that months past that. So you know, when God calls you to do something, right? And he's really testing your faith, you know? Will you move out in faith to what I'm leading you to do, right? As strange, right? And as impossible as it might seem, are you willing to do it? Nehemiah stepped out in faith as a cupbearer to be able to get favor from this king who was stewarding over his this land that was destroyed and said, you know what, we're gonna rebuild it for you. Here's all the resources. That's the same thing that happened with me with this officer. He opened up everything for me, right? Who has the ability to allow me to continue or not, right? God shifted what he was seeing and I was able to move through. And the story gets even greater, even more awesome, if that's like the right way to say it, right? It just gets really, really cool. So uh, when I was going to check in for my next flight at that airport, I... Uh, was told I can't fly because my COVID test needed to be within 24 hours, not 72. They just changed it. And I was like, dude, when did they change it? They're like, man, just like, you know, very recently, probably when you already left Uganda, that's when they changed it. I was like, this really is frustrating, man. I've been traveling for like 38 hours or so now, and I just want to get home, man. And the guy looks at me, he's like, you know, it's okay, wait. What you can do is at the airport, they've opened up a testing facility, right? A hospital, a private hospital has opened up a testing facility. I'm gonna send you with an escort and they'll get you through all of the lines, right? Where you can get the test and then come back in time. The guy who's checking me in is saying, I'm gonna make it back in time. I'm like, this is awesome, man. Like just when I had lost all hope, all hope returns, right? Because I'm on a divine mission. I'm on a divine purpose. Nothing can stand in my way. The doors will continuously open up. And so the resistance just comes to reveal to me how much I need God and how much I can just remain in a place of joy, right? Throughout the process. And so I was like, okay, cool. It's all working out, you know? We get to the testing uh, uh, facility and it's just amazing, like every line that people are waiting in, I'm just like moving forward. And people are looking like, who is this guy, man? Like, I'm like, I'm on a divine mission, man. I know you are too, but I am I have very time sensitive concerns right now, you know? And like, I wasn't saying all that, but you know, like I'm feeling that now for them because they were waiting too, you know? But I was literally gonna miss my flight and, and perhaps, you know, have to wait for days, you know, in the airport. But God was looking after me. He opened up favor for me. And so we get to the testing facility. And now they're saying that they're out of rapid test. They only have lab tests. And so it's going to take longer for me to get my results. I'm like, this is wild, man. Like, it's just event after event seems like it was coming against me. But I'm like, man, God's going to do something. He's been doing it this whole time. And... You know, what's funny is actually uh, before all I embarked on this traveling uh, journey from Uganda, I was praying one morning and the Lord gave me, uh, I saw the Lord and the Lord was speaking to me. Was, maybe it wasn't that I saw the Lord. Maybe it was just like 
because I've had so many of these encounters and I want to be genuine to what I'm sharing. I don't want to false testify. So without looking at my journal, I know for sure that God was speaking to me, right? So when he was speaking to me, he says, son, whoa, whoa, hallelujah. <laughs> God is good, man. God is good. Thank you, Lord, for opening up supernatural favor over them right now. That whatever stands in their way, the obstacles that stands in their way, Father God, is just building their faith. It's just building their understanding that you're in control of all things and that everything that you've told them will come to pass. And I thank you for giving them a revelation ahead of time. Right. So God had given me a revelation ahead of time when I was still in Africa that, hey, on this journey that you're going to be traveling on, you're going to run into a lot of delays. But don't be concerned. I've prepared a path for you. Right. And everything will work out. So I was like, I was holding on to that when these things were happening. So now I am just kind of frustrated and I'm saying, hey, man, like the guy said that you're going to have a rapid test. Right. Like because my flight is you know, in the next hour and a half. And um, one of the guys was saying, because there was like a group of people that were kind of handling my case or around uh, the main individual who's handling my case. And one of them said, hey man, you know, most people have to be here for hours going through this process. You've been here for 10 minutes. Just wait another 20 or 30 and like things will be okay. And I'm, I'm trying to be patient. And, you know, I ended up just saying, praise God, you know, not sarcastically, but just like, okay, praise God. And this is an Islamic country, so they say things like Allah Akbar, um, you know, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, and which it just means the same thing, like God is great. But I was saying praise God, and that's what a person that would say that you know maybe aligns with the faith of following Jesus Christ, right? All the people can say it from all different backgrounds is just traditionally connected with those individuals. So, I. And when I said praise God, the main guy who was handling my case just began to look at me with like a deep, intense stare, right? And I said, and I felt a shift happen, right? I was like, Some, something's shifting here. And all of a sudden I was like, does anyone have any pain over here? Any aches or pains or sickness in their body? The, my very escort responded and said, yeah. Like there's some kind of like a, a hairline fracture in his in his hand where like it's really hard for him to even play with his kid and his kid like loves to play and I was just filled with so much compassion for him and you know even for you you right now who's going through pain like we're gonna ask God to come and heal you of the pain because uh, a life in Christ is a resurrected life right where we can live outside of the pain through his divine union through his divine wellness that surely by his stripes we're healed right so this guy responds and I said, hey, he was a Muslim. And so I said, hey man, you know, Jesus Christ loves you. And he, when I pray for you right now, all of your pain is gonna go away because he wants to reveal to you that he's more than a prophet, that he's God. And so the other people that were Muslim there, they got kind of offended, you know, and they said, blasphemy, you know, like Jesus Christ is just a prophet. And so I just allowed them to speak and I continued forward. I was making sure I took care of this man in front of me who was in pain. So I prayed for him and I felt the glory of God just come upon us, right? Man, even right now, any pain right now, any sickness from the head to their toes right now, I thank you for the power of God being released upon them in Jesus mighty name that their entire body is coming into an alignment all pain all sickness leave now in Jesus mighty name and be restored to your heavenly state right now in Jesus mighty name hallelujah 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 I don't know I kept hearing like Terry Terry if, if you're watching this and I, and I could be wrong but if you're watching this, just know, man, God loves you so much. He's thinking about you. And um, he's, he, he really hears you, man. So this, this man gets healed, right? I'm like, hey, check your hand. Squeeze it. He's like, like he has this look of shock. Like, the pain's gone. Like, he said, it's drastically lowered. And I said, wow, praise God. Then the people who were saying, hey, he's blaspheming. You know, Jesus Christ is just a prophet. They were saying, hey man, if you're ever back in this airport, here's our card. You know, we'll make sure you don't have to wait in line that your, your COVID tests and things like that will be uh, set up and prepared for you with ease. 
I was like, man, this is so amazing. You know, like their hearts are completely shifted because they saw a miracle. They saw God really come alive, that he loves and cares this much. And it would just really warm my heart. And, you know, so I was given favor with people, right? Just like Nehemiah was, right? I was there on a mission, right? And with the officer, with the airline, right? With the people that were in charge of the testing, right? Just favor after favor and the main guy who was handling my case right he was also a believer just him and he's like hey my son's over here he's a believer talk to him like hey you know like let me introduce you to him he had completely shifted because in in the beginning it was kind of like rough to you know communicate with him you know like he had a lot of walls up maybe he had a hard day maybe you know it was late at night you know so i don't know what he was going through and so there's grace for that you know there's you know we can move past that and it was great that we could when God's glory opened up. And, you know, that's what God wants to do is unite people together, reconcile people together. Even like when there's differences, like Nehemiah was having differences with the people in that land. The end goal is as they see God's favor upon us, right? And that we're only able to do what we're doing because He's with us. They begin to shift and change. And we can always have our arms open with the bridge laid out. Hey, come, you know, like, let's let's reunite so that's the story i wanted to share because it, it has so many elements of what we were just reading in nehemiah you know at least it, it it felt that way to me and i was praying i was like god what should i share and he put this very testimony upon me to release and so i believe it's blessed you right because god had ordained this in this manner to be released and so yeah your life is valuable you're here to build something, right? Maybe in this season or the next. And here are some really great clues and strategies and how to become like God, free of performance, right? And when you're bringing solutions, God's favor comes upon you and all the alignment comes in, the provision comes in, the seeming roadblocks subside. Everything is happening for you, right? You're a victor. Bless you.